Anyways, uh, thanks for the introduction, Ron. Uh, thanks for all of you for coming. Uh, I'm excited to tell you about non-valuable codes for decision trees and more. Uh, so what is a non-valuable code? I'll tell you what the decision tree is about halfway through the talk. So what is a non-valuable code? So a non-valuable code is a randomized encoding scheme. So, uh, and I want to sort of remind you all of, or, or introduce you that so this coding scheme, unlike most cryptography, it's completely public. There's no secrets whatsoever. And in the con for this talk, everything is going to be information theoretic. Uh, there's no computational uh, indistinguishability or anything like this. Uh, but so, OK. So a non valuable code is a coding scheme. And we're going to think about this experiment. So you take a message, you encode it, then you put it through this uh, F. This is going to be a tampering function. You decode the tampered code word, and you output what you get. Okay. So we want two properties. We want correctness. We want that uh, if uh, no tampering occurs, you recover the message that you sent. It's a non-trivial uh, storage of information. And we want that uh, some security properties. Okay? So we want that uh, if, you tamper, if you do tamper with uh, the code word, you either recover exactly what you started with or something completely unrelated. What we, want, we don't want to happen is this x tilde here, the tampered uh, output, is it's like x plus 1 or something like this. What we would like instead is that like, basically all the attacker can do is just delete what you put through the channel and put whatever he wants, something that has nothing to do with the message. Okay? So let's formalize this a bit. So again, we have the same experiment. So how could we formalize this notion of uh, unrelatedness? So imagine we have a simulator, and the simulator is going to depend, depend only on the tempering function. Okay, So it's going to flip some coins, and then it's going to either output a special symbol, same, or some, what it's, so some random message, C. Okay? Uh, it doesn't fix message. It can output a distribution. Or it can output uh, many messages, right? But uh, this is independent of any input, right? It only depends on the tampering function. Okay, and we want to say that this simulator, if we wrap the simulator, and whenever we see the symbol same, we replace it with x. Otherwise, we just send through the message at output. Uh, we want that this distribution, this should be statistically close to the output of the distribution above. Okay, so this gives you this sort of ideal. Uh, real world paradigm uh, we're familiar with in cryptography, and we want this notion to be uh, of closeness to be statistical in this talk. Okay, uh, and another way that we can frame this is uh, we say that the, this experiment is statistically close to some distribution over identity and constant functions. Okay, so is this experiment so the function defined by randomly encoding, uh, tampering, and decoding should be close to some distribution that over identity and constant, and it only depends on the tampering function. OK. Right? And we need some parameters. So epsilon is going to correspond to sort of the distance. K is going to be the message links. And n is going to be the code word links okay, going forward. So some initial observations. Uh, you can't hope to achieve non nullability against uh, arbitrary uh, tampering functions. Uh, so it's easy to see that you can always just decode, temper, and re-encode, right? This attack will always work. So you have to limit your class somewhat. So you might consider, OK, let's consider a natural thing to consider is like uh, some fix some complexity class. Like in cryptography, we often have P adversaries. But if you, meet, if you think about it a little bit, I won't, uh, you can think about it on your own. If you have a non-malleable code against a complexity class, that's say, uh, you're, it implies a very strong average case hardness bound against the complexity class. So this basically limits, if you want an unconditional non malleable code, an explicit unconditional non malleable code, it sort of limits where you have hope of, find, uh, of achieving such an object, because basically it implies really strong circuit lower bounds. So what sorts of codes do we have like this? So we have, there's a ton of work on other tampering classes. I'm just going to focus on things that are sort of na correspond to natural complexity classes. OK? So in 2016, oh, sorry, with uh, Dana Dachman Saled, uh, Mukul Kulkarni, and uh, Tal Malkin, we constructed a non malleable code for local functions. So a local function is a function where each output only depends on a few input bits. You can write the output bit as a function of, in this case, at most three inputs. Okay? And so we constructed these codes 
for uh, local functions where the locality parameter is n to the one minus epsilon. It's like some polynomial, small polynomial, okay? Epsilon is anything, uh, uh, is like between zero and one, any constant, okay? And this contains nc zero. If you don't know what that is, great, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, so then uh, the following year, Chattopadhyay and Lee constructed a non-valuable code for small depth circuits. What is a small depth circuit? A small depth circuit is a uh, circuit of here depth D, and uh, it contains uh, unbounded Fanon and an OR gates and NOT gates. Okay, and you can always arrange them in this fashion with, uh, if you're willing to pay a little bit in the depth, but not much. Okay. And so they give this construction, which is uh, great for using uh, something called non malleable extractors. Uh, but the cold word length is uh, almost exponential in the, the message size, okay? The following year with uh, Donna Dockman Soled, uh, Xiao Guo, Tal Melkin, and Liang Tan, we gave a new construction for non malleable codes for small depth circuits, where the message, the cold word length is almost linear in the uh, message length, okay? Okay, and it supports depth D up to uh, log n over log log n. And surprisingly, if you can change this C to a big O, you would already separate P from NC1. Okay, but there's a problem with both of these constructions, and that's that the error is not very good. It's just barely negligible, basically. And uh, also the size, it does not support uh, super, like, size circuits that, like, where, where we know circuit lower bounds, basically. So it's not quite as good as we would like. And in particular, if you fix this epsilon to be two to the minus lambda for some security parameter lambda, then again, the code word length is exponential in message size. And so this is something that we were hoping to address with this work. And uh, not in the message size, sorry, in the security parameter. So in this work, we prove uh, three results. Uh, the first one, we prove uh, we construct a non malleable code with very good error contrasted to what was previously known, which it supports the same, for small depth circuits of the same depth as before, and substantially larger size. Okay, and along the way we construct two other codes, but I'll tell you more, uh, for one for decision trees and one for leakage resilient split state tampering, but I'll tell you more about that in a couple minutes. But first, I want to zoom in on this first theorem. So how would you, how would you prove something like this? How would you construct such a non code? code? So, Going back, recall the definition of the non malleable code. So, right, the definition says that this experiment is close to some distribution over uh, identity and constant functions. Okay? So, another way of viewing this, uh, introduced by some others, is viewing this as taking a complicated channel and reducing it to a simple channel. A simple channel that we like, that we know how to handle, basically. So, the encoding and decoding are the reduction. Okay, why is this, so formal, formally, uh, what, how would we say this? So right, E and D non malleably reduces a class, tempering class F to G, if E composed with any function F in the class, composed and then with D, uh, maybe I'm saying that backwards, but should be statistically close to D, some distribution over functions in G. G is the nice class here, okay? And you also need this uh, non-triviality requirement as well. You need to preserve this, that uh, you're actually encoding something. And so why is this nice? So say we have such a reduction from some uh, horrible class F to some uh, nice class G, where we know how to deal with G. If we have such a reduction, and so say we have a non malleable code also for G. We can just compose the two codes, and in pictures, we know that the code applied to functions in G is, you know, a non malleable code, and so the composed code is now a non malleable code for F. And so it gives us this nice uh, way of uh, constructing codes. And so that's what we're going to, and so all of our results actually, the reason we have these uh, intermediate results is they're going to follow, the, all of these results follow from such non malleable reductions. Okay, so a bird's eye view, what we're going to have is we're going to have this whole tower of, uh, Reduction, non malleable reductions from small, circuit, small depth circuits to decision trees to these uh, leakage resilient uh, split state or leaky split state tampering functions to split state and then split state, uh, known codes exist. Okay, so let's zoom in. Before I tell you what all these other things even are, let's zoom in on this small depth circuit thing. So this is a reduction from the prior work. And what the basically, the main idea here is we took 
We noticed that in uh, the circuit lower bound literature, you have this machinery switching lemmas for reducing small depth circuits to decision trees. Okay? And so the thrust of this work was taking this machinery and turning it into a non malleable reduction. So in the non malleable setting, you can reduce uh, small depth circuits to decision trees. Okay? So what is a decision tree? So recall this local function. So this thing, so each output depends on a few input bits. It's uh, local. But these choices of the input bits that it depends on are statically made. So in a decision tree, this is dynamic. So on the right, we have a picture of a decision tree. And so each, uh, to evaluate this decision tree, you know, this, uh, it's going to said, probe the bits on the left, like adaptively, and reads them off and decides which path to follow until it gets to a leaf in this tree, and then it will output whatever the leaf is labeled with. Okay, so all of the outputs are behave like this. They can make adaptive queries to the input. Okay, the depth is the long length of the longest path. And if you think about it for a minute, it's easy to notice. You can notice that uh, if a decision, the decision trees of depth D are, have locality 2 to the T, okay? And uh, also can be encoded by uh, T, T DNFs of size uh, exponential in T. Okay, so in this reduction, we use that fact that I just mentioned that uh, local functions uh, sort of capture very small decision trees. This only works, this relationship only holds for t at most depth, at most log n. But the problem with this is this reduction that we had, so the sort of quality of the reduction depends on the decision tree depth that you're going to. So if you want to go to depth t, you're paying uh, your epsilon you expect to get is t to the, uh, is t to the t essentially, t to the minus t. So in our work, because we didn't have codes for decision trees, we reduced to uh, local functions. And the local functions, right, the best you can do in terms of decision tree depth, if you view them as decision trees, is uh, log n depth. So this gives you, this is where this uh, bad error bound comes from, because it's like log n to the log n. But in this work, we construct non malleable codes for decision trees of uh, small polynomial depth. In particular, like approximately n to the one fourth minus epsilon. Okay, so right, uh, this is what exactly what we do: construct these non-malleable codes. And I should mention that these we think these things are independently interesting. So it's not like this is a strict subset of uh, small depth circuits. Uh, it's, I mean, well, it is if the circuits are large enough, but uh, it's independently interesting in this parameter regime. Okay. And the best thing that was known before was uh, depth uh, log squared n, but that doesn't seem consistent with what I told you, but that's actually from, if you convert your decision tree to a DNF, then you get that. And the only thing with comparable error is this code that we were using before for local functions. It only works for T of log n. Okay? So how, zooming in again, so how are we going to construct these codes for decision trees? Looking ahead, like, uh, we're going to have some more reductions, obviously. Uh, so, what, what was our starting point? So we were looking at this work from 2016, where uh, we, with this code for locali lo small locality, okay? And the key lemma is, again, a, a non malleable reduction from local tempering to split state tempering. So I should tell you what split state tempering is. I've mentioned it a couple of times. So split state tempering is like the output of your encoding gives you two code words, and you tamper with them completely independently, and then uh, decode, uh, okay? So the split state tempering is like uh, this independent tempering, and there's very good codes. This is an example from last year. Uh, subsequent work, there's a recent paper that uh, has a constant rate, but for our purposes, this is fine. Um, right, so in this work, so it's they actually, we uh, actually constructed uh, it wasn't a direct reduction initially. It was this uh, two-piece reduction. We reduced from local tampering to leaky input-output local, where the dependence uh, on both sides, we had this dependence graph for local function. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we had this, this re two-reduction way of getting to where we wanted to go. And then when we were looking at this, we decided that this was maybe the wrong way of abstracting what was going on. 
So instead, we introduced this new abstraction, where really we're viewing this code as being in two, the comp composition of two reductions instead, where instead you're going from local tempering to what we'll call weaky, weakly, leaky split state tempering. It doesn't, uh, and then from there to split state tempering. Okay, so what is this weak leakage tempering? Basically, the functions are allowed to read a couple of bits at the beginning from the other side, and then they have to temper independently from then on. Okay, so the reduction for this from the leaky split state or this weakly leaky split state uh, to split state is very simple. It's just you use some secret sharing techniques. The meat is in uh, the left, the left hand portion of this. Uh, okay. Um, but why was this useful? Because we noticed that when we thought about it like this, if we used similar techniques, not the same, but if we used similar techniques, we could push things a lot further by, by, via this abstraction. If instead of this super weak version uh, we had before of leakage, if we use a stronger version of leakage, then uh, we can push up to a much a stronger tempering class in terms of decision trees, okay? And so what we did is we constructed uh, two new reductions, but first I need to tell you what this, uh, unfortunately actually I won't be able to tell you much about either of these reductions, but I will tell you what this leakage resilient split state class is. So in, we think of Alice and Bob as uh, each getting as input a code word. Okay, and they're going to be tampering with these code words, and, but the, Leakage is basically they're allowed to communicate before having to output tempered code word, and they're allowed to communicate uh, delta n over two bits. So they each have a code word of size n over two, and they have to they can communicate delta n over two bits, and then they have to output a tempered code word, whatever they want. They're completely computationally unbounded. They're only bounded in communication. Okay, and this has actually been studied in the past. So uh, Agarwal et al. constructed uh, split state these, these objects from split state codes with uh, special properties. Uh, Chattopadhyay and Lee uh, constructed these things via uh, split state extractors, uh, non metable extractors. And uh, in this work, we give a new construction that's, uh, in our view, much simpler. Uh, and it's uh, also a black box reduction from uh, this uh, leakage resilient split state to split state. So it works with what, it, unlike the former example, it works whatever split state code you start with. And it gives you better parameters in terms of leakage, or at least explicit parameters in terms of leakage. Okay. So these are our results. Um, and unfortunately, I will have to uh, point you to the paper if you uh, would like to uh, learn more of the details, because I don't have a ton of time. Uh, but uh, some open problems, and I'd like to leave you with, because and if I have a ton of them if, you, if you're interest, more interested. But this, we have this uh, non-malleable code. Uh, our non-malleable code only works for decision trees up to uh, slightly less than a quarter root, and this we don't really understand why this seems sort of artificial, and so getting a, a non malleable code against larger depth decision trees, we think, is very interesting. And second, a uh, problem I'd like to leave you with is, in this work, uh, for epsilon, so right, we achieved this uh, epsilon that's uh, two to the n to the one over d. Okay, so for constant depths, this gives you something that's polynomial in the error parameter. And the security parameter. But this isn't quite, so, so it's like at, for, very large, uh, so for very large circuits, this is more or less consistent with the best things that are known in circuit lower bounds. But for small circuits, it's a bit different. So the best, the strongest result that's known is that uh, epsilon, the strongest uh, average case lower bound for small depth circuits is that if epsilon needs to be, uh, is at most uh, two to the n over polylog in D over, of S, which is the circuit size, uh, it's at most this correlated with parity, which is for, uh, for small circuits, if you have a poly size circuit, then this means that, uh, that for much higher depths, you, can, uh, you should 
you should, it seems intuitive that you should be, po it should be possible to get a much better uh, dependence on the security parameter. Um, and yeah, I'll just leave you with this uh, picture. So right, we construct these uh, inner two reductions and give new codes for the top uh, three classes. Thank you. So let's uh, thank the speaker again.